So equal versus unequal electron sharing. Ionic compounds have been known to be formed when metals lose their valence electrons and give them up to their non-metal counterpart. As a matter of fact, all bonds share electrons. Okay, despite what we've known that covalence is the only one. However, that the sharing is considered can either be considered equal or an unequal type of sharing. And that's really what we're going to be looking at. So what we have here are uh, three types of bonds that occur. A nonpolar, polar covalent, and ionic. And this nonpolar is nonpolar covalent bond. Okay? So what we've looked at before was really separating between ionic and covalent. And now we're going to be looking at two types of covalent bonds, the, the polar and the nonpolar. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to use the Greek symbol theta. If you can't see it, I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, so, which means partial charge, okay? So, what we have here, if, if you can look closely where we're looking at, let's say an example of two hydrogens put together, right? H2. So, the, the, uh, the bond and, and the electrons that are surrounding it come really close together, okay? So, we're looking at maybe the, the nucleus within here and the electrons pretty much circling around that, sorry for the <laughs> diagram, but anyway. Um, and so what we have is a sharing of the electrons, okay? And in fact, because they are two exactly the same uh, atom bonded together, there is, tech, there is no polarity. So there is nothing that is considered slightly more positive than the other end. So the entire end is considered the same. But let's look at another example here. Uh, so an example of a polar covalent compound, and we're looking at something like hydrogen, okay, uh, HCl, hydrogen chloride. We put those together here, the smaller atom of hydrogen, bigger uh, atom of chlorine, bonded together to form a polar covalent bond, okay. What happens here, pretty much, is, well, we have um, all these extra electrons that are circling around the chlorine, right, because chlorine has seven valence electrons, plus the one that it's sharing with hydrogen, eight, while hydrogen has the one of its own and the one Cl that it's sharing. And so what we have here is a slightly negative end and a slightly positive end, resulting in what we call polarity. So we, we know that we have, we have a part that is slightly positive and a part that is considered slightly negative. But ionic, on the other hand, let's say we have something like uh, lithium chloride. So we have lithium here and we know lithium has a one valence electron which it's going to lose it okay, to chlorine. Let me just draw these a little. Okay, and which has seven valence electrons. So it picks up the one so which by losing that electron it becomes slightly positive chlorine becomes slightly negative and there is an attraction because they're oppositely charged but the attraction, the gap between the two atoms is not quite the same as the gap between the polar covalent bonds. Okay, So because of this we don't have a slightly positive, slightly negative we actually in fact have a positive end we in fact have a negative end. So, we can use electronegativity value to identify whether the nature, what the nature of the uh, bond is. If it's ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent using the electronegativity numbers that we have on our periodic table. Okay, and we do this by finding what we call the electronegativity difference. So, which is shown by this, the change in electronegativity. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take the electronegativity of one of the atoms and subtract it by the electronegativity of the other. So if you had something like lithium chloride, as we were looking at lithium and chlorine there, you would take the two values, okay? So chlorine is 3.0, lithium is 1.0, and the result is an electro, a change in the electronegativity with lithium chloride as we looked at in the previous slide and we get 
a number of 2.0. But what does that mean? Well, let's look at the following chart. So here's, here's the chart. So we're going from the number from 0 all the way to 3.3. So if that number, as we just calculated, right? So lithium chloride, we got a number of 2.0 for our change in our electronegativity. So that value is within here. So it's considered mostly ionic, just as we saw. Lithium became completely positive, chlorine became completely negative as it picked up that electron. Now, if we had a value that is between 0 0.5 and 1.7, it is considered polar covalent, which would, if we look at the electro electronegativity number and you take the higher value, higher electronegativity value, that is the atom that is going to be slightly negative. And the number with the, the, the lower electronegativity number will be considered slightly positive. And then if you have a value that is between 0 and 0 0.5, it is completely nonpolar covalent, which means there will be slightly no, um, there will be no partial charge. Okay, so they're, they're, they're pretty much not going to have the, uh, the positive negative ends. And this is very similar with, 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 with water because we know water is polar covalent. And we know what does it mix with water? Oil. Why? Because oil is a nonpolar covalent compound while water is polar covalent. And that's one of the reasons why water and oil don't mix because oil doesn't have the positive negative ends that it needs to allow it to, to mix with, uh, with oil. So let's, let's try to find the, um, the change in the electronegativity of the following three examples. And if you take the, uh, the values and take a moment and find the electronegativity number of hydrogen, and obviously because we're looking at hydrogen and hydrogen, we know that if we, whatever the values happen to be, we will subtract them and we will get an answer of zero. So if we look at the number, we're going to get 2.1 minus 2.1, which will give us a value of zero. So hydrogen gas is at zero, which means it is considered nonpolar covalent. Okay. So, oxygen and water, we know that oxygen, so what you do here, because we have more than one H, what we're looking at is you take one of them and you take the other. And what you're trying to find is, is there, what's the change in electronegativity between, within that bond? And then you're going to look at what is the electronegativity of, between that bond. And it's not going to really matter because they're both the same, so you just find one of the values. So we look up oxygen and oxygen has a value of 3.5. We're going to subtract it by the electronegativity of hydrogen, which is 2.1, and we get a value of 1.4. So 1.4 within the polar covalent okay, polar covalent, which means the higher of the two electronegativity numbers means that the oxygen is slightly negative while the lower of the value is slightly positive. And let's look at the last example here. We have methane, which is CH4. And again, we're looking and we're comparing between one atom and the other. So we're looking and comparing between one bond and the other and we get 2.5 uh, for, uh, for carbon, we're going to subtract it by the 2.1 electronegativity and we're going to get a value of 0 0.4 which lies within this nonpolar covalent range which means that uh, CH4 is nonpolar covalent which means none of the ends are slightly more positive, slightly more negative which means one of the reasons why this wouldn't mix with something like water. Okay? Why a nonpolar covalent, and if, if a molecule is nonpolar covalent, it will not mix with anything that is considered polar covalent.